Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Eden Rosen, and today we are, what we are going to uh, show you is uh, innovation we did on how we are marrying uh, serverless concept with the edge and with the orchestration. So a bit about uh, myself and where I'm coming from. My name is Aiden, Ros Aiden Rosen. I'm uh, leading a solution engineering product management group in AT&T Tel Aviv. Uh, for those of you who uh, are not familiar with AT&T Tel Aviv, AT&T Tel Aviv is now um, uh, in her 11th year. Uh, previously, AT&T acquired a, a company called Interwise for uh, web um, and audio, uh, audio company. And... Um, Today we are doing a lot of innovation for AT&T and development on the network of AT&T. We are in the past four or five years heavily invested in eComp, which is the uh, ONAP internal deployment. We open sourced ONAP. We are leading few communities in ONAP, the modeling communities, the service design and creation, and other aspects of it. We are also, to relate to the presentation that you just saw, we are also involved in ONF with the uh, CIBA project and another project to come. So this is where we are coming from. Sorry. Yeah. So I, I think I don't need to, to explain so much why edge computing is, is a game changer. Edge computing is the key enabler for 5G. And 5G is not all about, only about bandwidth or coming closer to our customers in order to provide services with a, um, better a quality of service, quality of experience, lower latency. It also brings a lot of changes. For example, it's decentralized the architecture. It means that if we have, if we deploy our network based on one, two, couple more uh, data centers, with Edge I have multiple location. With the multiple location, I have a decentralized architecture. It has a lot of challenges that we need to overcome because we have many, many sites to manage. But it also brings a lot of benefits, for example, security. Security is just enabled out from the decentralized architecture, right? We, I don't have one side that I can attack or something like that. And I also have high availability and resiliency built in in this architecture. So indeed, edge computing 5G is going to mitigate a lot of latency, latency issue, bringing uh, uh, services that are, uh, that are new, like um, augmented reality, virtual reality, that depends on it. Even, it's, it's also essential for IoT. So it's a big changer. Um, however, it has a lot of challenges. For example, as I mentioned, uh, it distributed across thousands of locations. And when I have thousands of locations, I need to manage them. I need to uh, uh, provide all the FCAPs for operations based on them. And this is, this, is, this is a big challenge. Also, we know that the edge is going to be limited in many ways. It will be limited in space, in real estate, in cooling and power, it's going to vary with different kind of uh, flavors and, and portfolios of deployments. And the resources are going to be limited. The compute resources are going to, to be limited. And, and in some cases, even not reliable as the resources, compute resources I have in my, in my data center. So this is another big challenge. How do I manage a network where the compute resources are not guaranteed? in terms of their availability, and they have limitation of capacity. However, we would like to support a significant workload there. We will have a variety of workloads, like IoT application, VNF that we are going to push from the data centers to the cloud. It could be CDNs, for example, and other kind of VNFs that will support innovative services like augmented reality and virtual reality. The variety is is very big at the edge, we know it. The edge is al always has a lot of variety while the core is usually quite dumb. So how do we marry those kinds of challenges together? And one of the key aspects is that we would like to create a community of more application that can be installed on our network, on any kind of network that you will deploy, and how we could have an easier integration of third-party software uh, with our network. It's another, I, I think, cool uh, um, um, outcome of what, what will be with 5G. So we need to start and discuss what will be with orchestration and with other aspects to see how Edge is differ different than the, the central cloud. So in terms of orchestration, I'll, I'll do it quickly. 
um, um, because of time. So in terms of location, we know central pretty much location agnostic while application at the edge that I'm going to deploy needs to be deployed closer uh, to, to, uh, to my customers in order to provide um, the, the latency that I need and the quality of service that I need. So it's different. Um, mobility of workload, I'd like to, while in the data center, when I'm deploying my workload, my VNF, it stays there. Maybe it's static forever. While when I have an edge deployment, some application would need, a, uh, would need mobility of workload. We need this orchestration that can, you know, uh, install, deploy, instantiate, uh, um, um, scale, scale in, and scale out very fast uh, based on the location of, of the consumers of this application. You can imagine connected cars. You can imagine uh, um, virtual reality. Again, of dynamics is pretty much the same. In the central cloud, it's static most of the time. Once you deploy a service, it stays there forever. At the edge, sometime I would like to install something for a period of time. Maybe it could be minutes, hours, and then you know, bring it back, deinstall it, and that's it, right? So I need, I need much more dynamic orchestration that I have today. In terms of the architecture, if we go below in the central, uh, in the central uh, uh, cloud, most of the hardware is the same. I would like to have a, a homogeneous kind of an infrastructure, while at the edge we know that it's not going to be the same. I will have m different UCPEs, I will have physical devices like PNF, I will have uh, many kind of blueprints like Azure or AWS that are going to do multi-cloud. So it's going to be different in terms of the architecture and we would like to create a unified platform that we can unlock the same kind of APIs, unlock the same kind of management for our operations. And the latency, you deploy something in the central cloud is not latency agnostic most of the time at the edge. It's extremely relevant. And the availability of resources, as I mentioned, at the edge is, is not reliable and not available all the time. Monitoring is going to be different as well. At the central cloud, I can collect all the information with the database and, and analyze the database. I can do it in real time. I can do it for analytics and some uh, non-real-time use cases. While at the edge, probably I need to collect things in a way that are closer to the edge in order to uh, invoke operations that happen automatically uh, uh, very quickly in order to um, you know, scale and, and to continue mitigating all of the time the delay sensitivity of the application that I'm work with. Um, the architecture, again, it's different. Um, each cloud vendor has its own monitoring, monitoring framework. At the edge, when I have multi, multi cloud, maybe, or multi, I'm running on multi in infrastructure, I, I will need commonalities there. How can I create those kind of commonalities? Um, um, in terms of uh, um, distributed root cause analysis, uh, it's complicated at both ends. This is just, uh, uh, but it's going to be even more complicated at the edge. In terms of closed loop, control loop, um, recovery is much simpler at the, at, at, the, um, at the central cloud than it would be at the edge. Maybe some cases I won't be even able to do con control loop or all the cases at the edge and maybe I need some other methodologies in order to recover. Maybe it won't be at the same edge when I have a failure at the edge. I need to move to a different edge deployment and, and continue there. The data management, again, is another key important uh, aspect of it. Um, we need to have uh, the data available for all of the application on the entire infrastructure of the edge that I have, entire deployment that I have. Um, in, in the central cloud, everything is in one place. Uh, at the edge, it's distributed uh, along many places. Um, high availability of databases in central cloud, again, it's not a problem. It's things that we know how to do today. At the edge, maybe I won't need to. Maybe when I need to, I need to have a hybrid kind of a solution between the edge and the cloud for some of the services. Again, for latency and for mobility of the data, we would like the environment to be dynamic. So when we, and again, this is just a partial analysis and it's very draft, uh, uh, drafty. And we will continue to, to do these kinds of analysis in order to understand, better understand the edge. And, and I think we are in a point when we need to, when we look at edge deployment, we need to start uh, having some kind of manifesto 
uh, for an edge operating system, we need to treat the edge as one big distributed compute. We would like to have, again, a, a infrastructure and a pass, or at least the, the platform, to be holistic, uh, homogeneous, in order to perform the same orchestration, the same monitoring, uh, as much as possible on different kind of infrastructure. We would like to harness distribution for availability and reliability. Data should be available everywhere, because if I have an application that needs to be mobile, I need to bring the data to any place the application is going to, to be. Um, execute workload anywhere uh, at the edge, uh, regardless of the infrastructure. Again, the same platform. Um, we need intelligent resource management. It couldn't be things that I need to orchestrate, I need to specify the location, I need some automation for my orchestration, I need to bring machine learning to the play to, to get this decision going much faster. So we need an intelligent resource management. We also need an intelligent resource ma ma management to um, uh, uh, help us with the compute resources that I just mentioned that are limited and, and unreliable for some time. And we need a locate sensitive uh, orchestration. We need to expand beyond the edge boundaries. We need to have application that can run at the edge and can run at the, at the, at the central cloud and the hybridity of between them. And we probably, we obviously don't want to have any single point of failure when we discuss at the edge. So I think you, everybody heard about how AT&T is committed to open source uh, in the past few years, AT&T uh, um, initiate and participate in many, many programs. One of them you just heard in the previous, pro previous uh, uh, presentation with ONF, it's also OPNFV, uh, ONAP, uh, coming from Linux Foundation is, is one of the biggest. Also coming from them is Acrino, and Acrino it's all about Edstack. Is how I can provide a platform with the additional services above, above them uh, that can fit, uh, as a blueprint, can fit many, many portfolios of edge infrastructure. So there is an industry adopted uh, adoption of the cloud native for edge, which is, which is huge. Um, it's container-based. We have a smaller prootment than, than, than VM, which is also better for resource utilization, because as I mentioned, we don't have many, many compute resources in some of the edge deployment. With that, it's improved util resource utilization, and we obviously advanced with microservice architecture. However, the integration of microservices is complicated. We don't, have to have, we don't want to have permanent allocation of resources for our workloads. We would like to have you know, when a workload that is not running, maybe I can take the compute resources out of this uh, workload and use for other workloads at the edge. So this is a big concept. And container is still a large execution unit. So in the past two, three years, serverless and function as a service become, become very dominant and very big. We see a lot of startups trying to um, uh, work with the uh, serverless uh, use cases, uh, Amazon, has the Amazon Lambda together with Greengrass. Uh, Azure has its IoT Azure platform. Google just uh, announced a, a GA of their fast layer. And this is, this is very big. So those of you who are not aware with fast, I think some of the key bullets here are that function is the unit of deployment and scale. Function, uh, uh, um, when you write your function, uh, it, you write it with the notion that you are not writing the code on how it's going to be deployed and how it's going to use servers. This is why it's called serverless. Um, when it's not used or not invoked, uh, then uh, the function doesn't use compute resources. This is key, right? This is why uh, um, you can see why we think that serverless fits to the edge very nicely. Uh, for those who are using functions, um, you are not paying uh, today for uh, um, um, a function that is not being invoked, not being used. So this is a big, big concept. It's breaking the microservices into smaller and smaller uh, uh, units uh, with the notion of bringing your own code without the notion of how we are, I'm, I need to uh, um, deploy my, my code uh, into a server. So function in nutshell, there is an event. Event could be whatever you think. Uh, it could be a, an OSS BSS timer, data path, it's invoked the function, the function provides some kind of a business logic. Once the business logic ends, there is an output and the function itself dies. 
Uh, it uses the compute resources for a short period of time, only when it does the processing, and you can obviously do function chaining in order to get any, any complicated business logic that you try, try to, to, to make. So it's good for data collection and enrichment, it's good for mobile backend, it's cool, it good for uh, these kinds of things, it doesn't good for long-running long persistency, network tra traffic processes and data, data centers, uh, databases, I'm sorry. Okay, if you have something that is event driven, uh, uh, it's very good for. And you can see the edge coming with IoT use cases that most of them are event driven. So what, we what we did we build? So uh, we called it Agility. It's an open source attempt to marry serverless uh, orchestration and the edge itself. Uh, we open source it through the Acrino uh, open stack, uh, I'm sorry, the Acrino open source as part of uh, Linux Foundation. Uh, we worked with our partners in AT&T Lab in the United States. We worked with the ONAP community, uh, with Cloudify, which is our part of the service orchestration framework in ONAP. So, uh, and, and what we did is we used the uh, Acrino edge stack, as you can see here. It, we used the Kubernetes, we used the Dockers, uh, we use OpenStack Cloud VMs, and we built a data, data pipe, you can see it as a data layer, where we have an IoT MQTT event to capture events that coming. This is like the event broker. We are using Kafka uh, for, the, for getting those events and, and, and schedule them for the uh, Kubeless. Kubeless is another open source coming from Kubernetes, from the uh, community. This is really the function as a service layer, and we build a set of functions just to demonstrate that this pipeline works. You can uh, get events, you can process the events, the events call the function, the function do something, there is an output, and you can start, you know, innovate with this kind of framework uh, and, and see what you, you can do with it. So everything is open source through Akrino. The use case itself is open source. Um, we are orchestrating with ONAP. We are orchestrating the edge itself, the blueprint of the edge itself, the Akrino building block, and with the kubeless platform and with the data layer that we provided with all of the functions. And just to showcase a demonstration of it, um, I, I won't show you the video because of time, but you can see it, it's open source, it's also on YouTube. Uh, what we did is just demonstrated an intelligent transport system, a connected car kind of a, a, a use case where each function represents a car vendor. We have three vendors. The vendors you can see are with a different kind of colors. Um, we have a function mobility. It means when the, the car is moving from one edge to another edge, we are mobilizing the function from one edge to another, doing the orchestration of it. And we are uh, demonstrating here some kind of a, a problem at the road. Um, and when we recognize the problem, we can uh, give uh, feedback for the, to the cars, go to the other direction, and we split uh, the traffic to two different directions. This is just to show you that this is an event-driven IoT use case that you can, you can play with and work, it, work with our data, uh, data pipe layer that we just uh, built and open sourced. So a reference architecture for you on the slide to, to understand exactly how we build uh, built every, everything. Um, I won't get, get too much into the details, but you can see Again, the event generator, the IoT gateway, the fuss itself, and the function that represents the different kind of cars. We have a visualization layer. We are using Prometheus and Grafana to capture the event, to capture, and to monitor the function, and to see how they are being used, what is the performance of the function, and so on. And we have the orchestration coming from ONAP using Cloudify. We also use, use uh, the SDC, Service Design and Creation, uh, the design time platform in ONAP for VNF onboarding. We are leading this in, from Tel Aviv. And uh, you can see here the deployment, the blueprint itself being created in a self-serve kind of a fashion. The kubeless, the Kubernetes, the IoT gateway, the functions with all of the reference architecture of it. And then Orchestrator, the SO Cloudify can take and, and deploy it whenever we want. Again, the agility code is being contributed to, to uh, Acrino open, open source, and you can see all the contribution that we did uh, and the stack, and, and you can join uh, Acrino and, and look at it. In terms of our next step, 
We are about to start the second development uh, of the second phase of the development, and we would like to showcase the dynam dynamicity of the orchestration of function powered by machine learning. We are going to do it with another Linux Foundation a, a community called Akimos, Akimos AI, that brings uh, machine learning and AI models uh, for telcos. So this is what we are doing, and, and you are all welcome to join our journey, contribute, and discuss this with us. And right on time. Questions? Yes? Right, so, so, so it's, not, it's not in production. This is a showcase, right? Um, um, in terms of security, I can tell you that a few things. First is a big thing, right? It's a big thing, and you can, uh, most of the community knows about problem in security in Kubernetes, probably problem with kubeless, problem with, uh, with, with serverless. A lot of uh, startups in Israel are now innovating their out, bringing security to function, bringing security to Kubernetes. We are based on those open source, and the community can obviously assist us in, in, in these aspects. Uh, we do not contribute to the security part. More questions? All right. OK, so anyway, uh, what is the relationship with Airship? Uh, the airship within yeah. within uh, within Akrino. So within Akrino, there is another project called Airship uh, to um, package and package the, the containers. Uh, I'm less familiar with it. We didn't use it. Okay. We didn't use is it. it different blueprint. We didn't use it. It's, it it could be part of the blueprint in order to uh, um, um, uh, package the blueprint. All right. right, package okay. package the blueprint. We didn't use it, but again, it's available in Aquino, and it might be it might be part of our, our next phases to try and use it. All right. So second, are you saying the Cloudify is like a service orchestrator in on app? Right. But it's not right. A service orchestrator is a service orchestrator. I said I said I said the SO is a framework. In the in SO, you have the um, you have many components there. One of the components in the S, the, the, solu the service orchestration, orchestration there is Cloudify, Cloudify open source. It's there. All right, okay. It's just a name, just a name, just a name. Sorry, maybe a, a very basic question. What's the freak? Because this is, uh, as you say, the useful for event-driven ca use cases, no? In theory, even the packet processing is event-driven. So the, the point is that what's the frequency of the events per second where you see this approach more convenient than the traditional, let's say, containerized or virtualized approach? Did you make this analysis? The, I, the, the short answer that I don't know. I don't know. It's something to, to try and showcase and see, you know, what application, what is the velocity of application and the event that they, they, they bring. We see a lot of um, um, startup in Israel um, demonstrating their fast layer, their serverless layer with uh, hundreds of thousands of events, but we never use this one. This is kubeless, it's open source, right? We can, we can both go and see what, what, it can, what it can deliver for us. And again, per the use case, per the velocity of, you know, we will know best if we need to deploy we what will be okay. the deployment. Okay, more questions? Cool. Thank you very much, guys.